Metroid Dread is the first brand new 2D Metroid adventure since 2002's Metroid Fusion. Billed as a finale 35 years in the making, Metroid Dread is a special occasion for fans of the series. But will it live up to the series' legacy? Here's how we felt after trying it for ourselves. It's the opening moments that give me the most hope that Metroid Dread will live up to its famous namesake. While Metroid Dread doesn't exactly sport AAA production values, its first few scenes manage to be beautiful in their own way, sparking that familiar feeling of tense curiosity endemic to the series. A wordless duel serves to establish the mood as Samus begins delving into the mysteries of Planet ZDR, which is swarming with aliens, robots, and maybe even Metroids. Metroid Dread falls in the footsteps of Metroid Samus Returns, the remake of the Game Boy's Metroid 2 released on the Nintendo 3DS back in 2017. Like Samus Returns, Metroid Dread is being developed in part by Mercury Steam, the Spanish studio once responsible for Castlevania Lords of Shadow. As you might expect, it's a clear step up from the 3DS visually, its color palette allowing it to shine despite its otherwise simple presentation. It's buoyed by the Switch OLED's improved screen, which goes a long way toward bringing Metroid Dread's otherwise spare environments to life. Due to launch the same day as the Switch OLED, Metroid Dread is being treated as a showcase game for Nintendo's new console, and honestly, it looks great. The Switch OLED's more vibrant colors really help it to pop out of the screen. As expected, Metroid Dread's map is also once again massive, filled with a multitude of alien-infested nooks and crannies to explore. Adding to its sense of scope is the way that Samus takes up much less screen real estate this time around, making the caverns and hallways feel vast by comparison. I got turned around more than once in my hands-on with Metroid Dread, slightly flustered by the lack of a morph ball. Samus, as always, is bereft of her powers to start the game. Notably, the map seems more complex than before making it much harder to simply go to the spot you haven't explored yet. Traversal definitely requires some thought in this game. This sort of exploration is a big part of the Metroid experience, and Metroid Dread has plenty of it. Where it parts ways with the rest of the series is in its emphasis on combat. The arm cannon parry returns, and successfully timing out counter hits is a big part of surviving encounters with larger foes. This puts it roughly in line with Samus Returns, which also uses elaborate boss encounters and camera flourishes to lend its combat a more cinematic feel. At the moment, Metroid Dread's weakest element are the stealth encounters that form the core of its premise. Emmy rooms dot Metroid Dread's map, serving as bottlenecks where Samus is hunted by droids that desire only to harvest her DNA. They seek to expand on the famous SAX encounters from Metroid Fusion, but where those moments felt organic and terrifying, the Emmy chases feel more stilted and artificial. My hope is that this is only the beginning, and that Metroid Dread will find increasingly inventive ways to make use of its robotic foes. In the meantime, it will be up to Metroid Dread to close out one of the most beloved storylines in gaming history. That's a tall order, and Metroid's storytelling track record has been decidedly mixed over the past decade. But it's hard not to be enticed by Metroid Dread's earlier moments, which so effectively established the mystery at the core of its story. They serve as a wonderful reminder that the atmosphere that has long made Metroid so special is alive and well. Metroid Dread will be out October 8th. There's lots more Metroid Dread coverage on the site, as well as our extended hands-on preview of the Switch OLED. And for everything else you need to know about the rest of the video game world, stick with IGN.